really thrilling to be here and to host everyone here at our new global headquarters for such an important milestone event um, in the history of Circle. And I actually want to start there, which is to talk a little bit about uh, Circle's history to, to put some context around what we're doing today. Um, you know, this is a company that I co-founded 12 years ago. And as we were founding the company, as I was getting interested in this technology in 2012 and then founding the company in early 2013, you know, there were a set of things that we had as ideas. Uh, the first was that we believed it would become possible to, as blockchain technology emerged, and back then it was seven transactions per second with settlement time in an hour, with Bitcoin as the settlement asset, and that was sort of what existed. Um, but when we looked at the technology, we could see a path over the next, you know, let's say three to five years where it would become possible to issue an actual digital dollar on these networks, that you could issue a dollar digital currency, you could make it available as an open protocol on the internet, and that, that not only could you have that scale as these networks took on greater and greater scale and capacity, but that you could actually have a new form of programmable and composable money on the internet. And that founding vision that we had going back 12 years ago has really been what we've been pursuing ever since. And you know, in, in that founding time, we had this mission, and, and, I, and I deeply believe in this, and it's, it's something that every employee in this company deeply believes in, that we can actually raise global economic prosperity through the frictionless exchange of value. And we're in the early days of pursuing this mission, the very, very early days of pursuing this mission. Stablecoin money is a mere 0.17%, last time I looked, of the global electronic money supply. The amount of activity is, is exciting, but we're in the very early stages of this. But 12 years ago, we had this vision that if those things came to pass, if you could have a protocol for dollars on the internet and it was open and programmable, that you could actually build from the ground up an internet financial system. You could have a base layer of money you could compose on top of that base layer of money, and it could be a full reserve money that is safe and, and has essentially moves into a, a world where the, the storage and transmission of value is a commodity-free service on the internet, and that through programmability and smart contracts that you could actually recreate a lot of the building blocks that we think of in the financial system today, and that that ultimately would span not just what we think of as finance, it would touch every aspect of commerce in the world with the highest velocity, highest utility money that had ever been created. So we relentlessly focused on how could we achieve that. And it took a good five years of technology, of regulatory progress, and of blockchain technology progress to actually achieve the basic idea behind our founding vision, which was the launch of USDC in 2018, five years into the company's history. And USDC today is obviously a significant platform, but when we launched USDC in 2018, we thought about it as a platform and a network that other people would build on top of. And in fact, our whole strategy was to work with developers, work with the leading developers that were building the most interesting on-chain protocols for using this new kind of programmable money. And we took a big tent mentality of working with the ecosystem and trying to drive adoption of this protocol that, for dollars on the internet. And that strategy of building a stablecoin network has been driving our growth ever since. From when we launched it and worked with all of those early teams in 2019 and we caught the flywheels of this network in 2020, it's been extraordinary. And today, Circle operates the largest regulated stablecoin network in the world, and, and obviously one of the very largest stablecoin networks in the world. And the strategy that we've had has been to build this network as an, as an internet scale platform and utility that is free to use to any person that wants to connect to it, any developer that wants to connect to it, who can build integrations that build utility for users, which drives demand for the digital dollars, which drives more demand for developers to build on it, and that's a very powerful flywheel. And importantly, we've done this in a way where it's an expanding economic opportunity for everybody. 
the concept of a platform with an ecosystem where people build and integrate allows a lot of people to build value. And there's been enormous amounts of value built around this stablecoin network to date. And we're in the very, as I said, we're in the very, very beginnings of scaling this. So that's been our strategy to get this network going and, and, and built over time. And it's achieved a lot. I mean, I think you all know a lot about these metrics. But our stablecoin network has achieved significant global scale and significant reach uh, with over 185 countries supporting direct uh, on and off ramps into USDC. Over 600 million people can reach into their pocket and take out an app that they're familiar with and access and use USDC today. We ultimately want to see that in the billions. And over $26 trillion of all-time on-chain transactions. And just in the first quarter, uh, I think approaching $6 trillion of on-chain transactions. So the amount of money velocity and, and, and adoption that's happening here is really, really exciting. Now, that stablecoin network is built on a foundation of a set of platforms and infrastructure that we've built out over all these years. At the, at the foundation of that are the money assets we issue, USDC, EURC, and our, our tokenized treasury and repo fund product, USYC. Global banking infrastructure that we've built out all around the world were integrated directly in major financial market centers all around the world, in many cases with 24-7 liquidity in and out of USDC on a wholesale infrastructure layer. That is all of the reserves and banking infrastructure that makes this work around the world. We've deployed this across 19 blockchain networks and growing. It's a multi-chain infrastructure to go where applications are, where users are, where demands are. And this is really important. And then on top of that are suites of products that we've built, liquidity service products. Many of you connect to and use things like Circle Mint or Circle Credit. Uh, developer services, our wallets infrastructure, our custody infrastructure, um, our, our on-chain infrastructure like CCTP and Paymaster, these developer services that allow people to build. So this has all been, this platform sort of undergirds that stablecoin network today. And of course, what we're here to talk about today is the next layer of Circle. So when we, when we think about the stablecoin network and the platform that's built it, what we're now introducing uh, and, and have announced and are rolling out today is this next layer of Circle, the Circle Payments Network. Um, this uh, is something that is grounded in the vision that the company has had since our inception, this, this vision of, of frictionless movement of value programmable frictionless movement of valuable in a compliant, trusted way that can serve any use case in moving money in the entire world. So Circle Payments Network is that next layer. And I want to talk uh, a little bit more about it uh, to provide some insights for you all about what we're ultimately trying to do here uh, with, this, with this introduction. So the, the first is that this is an on-chain payments network for global money movement. So there's been lots of different payments networks in the world. There's lots of, there are global payments networks, there are regional payments networks. You're all familiar with all the different kinds of payments networks. This is an on-chain payments network for global money movement. And why is this the time to do this? And, and why is the world ready for this right now? It's a bunch of things. The first is it's become very clear that it is the mainstream moment for stablecoin payment utility. This moment, which we've been building to since the founding of our company, through the development and launch of, of USDC, through the scaling of our stablecoin network, we're now at a place where the technology is ready. Blockchain network infrastructure that scales, blockchain network infrastructure that can provide security and privacy, fundamental infrastructure that can work at scale. The ability for enterprises and financial institutions to use excellent enterprise technology to integrate this into their own systems, their own technologies, developer tooling that's really straightforward, end user experiences that are no longer scary to interact with and use. Like So many technologies have been solved. And, and actually, I can reflect on this. Like during the last, quote, crypto winter, I was so enthusiastic. I actually had a post on X. You can go back and look at it and why I was so bullish about things. It's because what I was seeing was all this progress 
this incredible progress in the technology. And we're now at a place where, as I like to call it, we, we've achieved kind of the broadband moment in stablecoin utility. We're really getting to that place where people can turn this on and use it, whether it's a business or an end user, a financial institution, all these types of users. So we're, we are crossing the chasm in terms of the technology adoption life cycle, and the technology is ready. And that's only really come to be the case uh, in the past, really, year or so. I think we can definitively say. So the technology is ready. The legal frameworks are ready. Stablecoin money is becoming legal electronic money everywhere in the world, in every major jurisdiction, including here in the United States. It's a breakthrough. We have regulatory clarity. Stablecoin money, properly uh, regulated, reserved, and supervised, can be this base layer of, of money on the internet. And that is coming into place, which gives everyone the confidence to be able to build on it, whether you're a major capital markets participant, an enterprise, an end user in, in a market that just wants to store value in all of these places and all of these use cases around the world that gives people the confidence that this money is here and is a trustworthy instrument that they can use. And obviously, large established stablecoin networks and the platforms that support them are ready. We are ready to deliver on this today. We've been working on this for quite some time, and so we're excited to unveil it. Um, and as noted, this is really executing on a vision that uh, we've had since the founding of the company. And so it's really exciting to be able to, to bring this forward today. Now, our product leaders are going to uh, come up here shortly and get into a lot more detail about how CPN works. Um, but at a high level, a couple things to note. CPN is transparent, it's secure, it's scalable infrastructure for financial institutions. Circle is not getting directly involved in serving end customers. This is about people building value, financial institutions building value on top of this infrastructure. It's an orchestration layer. It's a programmable orchestration layer. And I'll talk more about what that means. Um, but Circle itself is providing this as a technology, as a network. We're not moving money. Uh, all of you that are involved in this and other financial institutions are moving money using Circle Payments Network. So what does this look like? Um, we, we published a, a white paper alongside this. And there's a lot of detail in the white paper. Some of you uh, may have already read through it. I would encourage you to read through it closely. Um, Circle Payments Network for, for, for Global Money Movement is built around ultimately being able to serve almost any use case for money movement in the world. Our vision here is that a, an internet-based on-chain payments network can support everything from a consumer transaction for 25 cents for a digital good in a Web3 game to the largest banks in the world moving capital between their desks and exchange platforms where they're putting on huge you know, interest rate derivatives positions and everything in between. This can support retail scale to, to institutional use cases over time. So th the vision is that this kind of money movement layer, unlike past money movements layer, is very, very scalable in terms of its utility and its use case, which we already see today with stablecoin money. Now, there's a couple other things to note that you see here. One is it's built on a set of core services that Circle has, is launching, uh, and many of you are already integrating with as we prepare to go live. Um, and it also assumes that there's an entire ecosystem that's integrating around this as well of service providers that are providing services to participants on the network and ultimately to the end user participants that interact through the network. And so we're going to hear more about that as well. The focal point for Circle Payments Network today, as we get ready to go live with this, and we'll hear about the, the rollout uh, very soon, is on transforming cross-border payments, cross-border money movement. This is a, a very, very real and powerful issue. It's actually an issue that, and an and a, and a opportunity that I know has actually brought so many people into this industry, is this idea that there has to be a better way for us to move value around the world uh, and to do that for people and for businesses and the like. And we all have been working tirelessly to achieve that. So that's the immediate 
major opportunity. And as I like to say, or as I rather I like to ask, is when's the last time that any of you sent a cross-border email? Just doesn't make any sense. Cross-border money movement is going to be exactly the same. We have to build these networks and protocols where the experience for users is no different than the experience of moving information and moving data and moving communications. That's been the vision of the company since we founded as well. And we know that this is a, a problem space where there's literally you know, trillions and trillions and trillions of dollar of value and also incredible time delays, expenses, trapped capital, inefficiencies from a business perspective. We know all of that and there's plenty of data out there about those issues and we all feel them. Um, and these are acute issues in many parts of the world that have a huge impact on, on individuals and, and, and businesses. And so we want to really focus on how do we really solve this problem in a very, very deep way and do it with this on-chain model of stablecoin payments. Now, this is something that is already organically happening. In fact, many of the partners that are here today and are building on this already have businesses supporting this today. It's already happening. But how do we turbocharge it and have it take on more and more of the real economic activity in the economy, the real economic activity of households that need to move money? So this is the space that we are really, really um, driving in on to get this off the ground. The other piece that I want to emphasize, and this is also something you can read a little bit more about in our white paper, and, and I know our team will talk a little bit about, but what, what really got me excited about founding Circle 12 years ago was the idea of programmable money. And, and back then, you know, smart contracts were an idea on napkins. There wasn't a thing, but there were people writing really interesting ideas about it. And as someone who's built programming languages and developer tools and virtual machines in prior lives, uh, prior to Circle. This idea of a protocol for money on the internet, of programmability, of extensibility, is a really, really powerful idea. And it powers all of DeFi today, and it powers a lot of really innovative things happening uh, in the payment space already. But this idea with a payments network has truly never existed. An open network that's built on the open internet and open public blockchains and open APIs that anyone can craft and build upon, that's fundamentally new. But a payments network that itself is open, that itself allows for extensibility and modularity, has never truly existed as well. And so CPN is designed around this at the core. And what that means is that we will, as Circle, as the, as the uh, provider of this, uh, this network at, at the start here, we will provide first party modules where we, we see fundamental things that are needed to support all these critical use cases that are there. But third parties will be able to build modules for this network as well. And so all of the developers that are building smart contracts and building smart contract protocols can build modules that plug in and become part of the bigger network and provide utility to the network. And most importantly, and this gets to the very foundation of how we're going to market with this and how we think about this, is that like Circle's stablecoin network already, we're building this with a big tent mentality. What do I mean? Everybody needs to win. Everybody needs to be able to build a business. Every developer that has an idea, every intermediary that wants to bring value to users, everybody needs to be able to participate. It's an everybody wins economics. Whether you're originating payments, receiving payments, providing a service to the network, building modules that expand the utility and functionality of the network, everybody wins economics. It's really, really important. And as we think about how we build this into what we hope will become one of the largest payments networks in the world for global money movement, um, we're excited to be building that with everyone here. We're excited to be building that with any institution that wants to be part of building this internet financial system.